Hello friends, tonight we're going to take a look at the Microtech Scarab 2. This knife is kind of crazy. I uh, I think it's intended as a, a large underwater dive OTF for frogmen, I guess. Is frogmen still something people say or do we just call them divers now? I, I, I don't really know. But if you were a super villain deploying teams of frogmen around your underwater lair that happens to have maybe a very large moon pool or is built into some sort of underwater volcano, perhaps, this would probably be the knife that you would want to issue to them. I don't know what they would need the knife for necessarily, but they have it, you know, spared no expense, I guess. On the surface, this knife is less attractive than other Microtechs, perhaps. The handle is plain, the blade isn't as batshit insane as usual. A Microtech fan I know looked at this knife and said, I kind of hate that, and, and she kind of has a point. You've got this squarish handle, these almost hard edges, just some skateboard tape for grip. Very little complex machining on this one, with the exception of those those channels. The blade is a simple stone wash. The knife is very large with a large button and a glass breaker that's more reminiscent of those on the vintage Microtechs. And yeah, you know, the channels cut into the blade to prevent hydro locking to allow the blade to deploy even underwater, or so they say. I guess that's the deal with the skateboard tape. It keeps you from dropping the knife when you're out there frogmanning out there on the, the open ocean trying to escape from super smart Alzheimer sharks. After I carried this knife for about a month, though, looks aside, I came to adore the way that Microtech threw the usual aesthetic touches out the window and made a knife that is purely functional. Weird <laughs> water channels aside, and maybe maybe those fucking things are, are functional too, but I mean, not for normal people. Definitely not for us. And you know, so many of y'all motherfuckers complain about how Microtech is so expensive and so decorative and fancy and it makes you so mad and you hate it because they're just, they're all form and no substance. Well, suck it because your complaints were heard, I guess. Microtech brought back uh, a very functional classic here, even if it is uh, a little bit ugly for those of us who did prefer the kind of crazier Microtech aesthetic touches. Features. First, a shameless plug. If you like my work, please subscribe. That massively helps out the channel, and I will be forever in your debt. And if you love the channel, consider supporting me on Patreon. You get access to the TGP Discord server, a profane place for profane people. And for $5 a month, you get seasonal TGP patches. All right, back to the show. The Scarab 2 is a double action OTF, meaning that when you push the sliding button forward, the blade deploys. And when you pull it rearward, the blade retracts back into the handle. This is a large knife. The blade is 4 inches long and the handle is 5.75 inches long for an overall length of 10.75 inches. Another important measurement is the thickness of the handle. This one feels abnormally thick for a Microtech, over half an inch, right at 9 sixteenths to be a hair more precise. But that's actually only a little bit thicker than the Combat Troodon, but because it has no contour and the edges are less rounded, it feels like a much more substantial difference. You see what I mean? Looks like there's much more of a difference than there actually is. The Scarab weighs 5.6 ounces. That's at the top end for a Microtech OTF. The Halo 6 is right at 6 ounces, and the Combat Troodon weighs 5.3 ounces. Our lovely brickish handle is made of 6061 T6 aluminum, and the blade on my particular example is M390. I've only seen these in M390 thus far, maybe one or two in 204P, but I'm sure they will turn up in LMAX and XHP as well, which really sucks. Let's take a moment to discuss the steel swapping. So I love Microtech. They make the best OTFs on earth, but I hate the steel swapping. XHP just doesn't hold an edge nearly as long as 204P or M390, or hell, as long as LMAX either. Though LMAX isn't my preference, I could see a case for that particular steel. It has some excellent properties that make it useful under certain circumstances. 
but Christ, just pick a steal and, and go with it. Uh, apparently, they switch it up because of availability, but it drives customers crazy. Uh, at present, the Scarab 2 is only available with a drop point stone wash blade, which is a very useful blade shape, so that's good. The whole grip is covered in this rubbery, very grippy skateboard tape like you'll find on the SOCOM. We have a, a typical Microtech bent steel pocket clip here and this glass breaker. It's just sort of a mix of the old one and the new one. I, I dig the way it looks. It's cool. Did I just say dig? I dig the way it looks? Oh god, what the fuck is happening to me? How has the Scarab 2 performed? Well, this is the most useful double action OTF Microtech has made in a long while. Often Microtech blade shapes are geared towards either defense or tool tasks. As a result, I've often carried two Microtechs, something like a double-edged uh, Combat Troodon and maybe a Tanto UTX-70 or SOCOM or LUDT or, or whatever. The double-edged Combat Troodon is not going to be great for cutting your ham sandwich at lunch. And you can't really whittle wood with it lest you whittle your fingers along the way. But it has some incredible penetrating power. Wow, that was a really awkward thing to say. Speaking of awkward, wait here. I'm going to get something for you. This is a horse calendar that my wife got for me. And it is awesome. It's really more for y'all than it is for me. I like it. It's, it's very erotic, as you can see. So we'll choose some choice pictures from inside this calendar to be included in future videos. Oh, look at that. That is, that is a good one right there. Oh yeah, check that out. That's yeah. So that's gonna be that's gonna be great. Now, meanwhile, uh, back to Microtech. Something like the SOCOM isn't great for defense. Cuts really don't do that much damage relative to penetration. A SOCOM won't penetrate like a double edge. I know that tip looks fairly sharp, but it it really isn't. Now it will penetrate something. I'm not saying that it won't. I'm just saying that it cannot compare to a double edge. But the Scarab here has a very pointy tip. That is much pointier than the SOCOM, while uh, leaving this very useful cutting edge here for actually cutting things. There have been more than a few days where I've only carried this one knife. Yeah, you're not supposed to use your defensive knife to actually cut stuff, but whatever, I, I like to live dangerously. So let's compare this knife to some other Microtechs. It's very large. Most of these are not going to fit in frame, so I'm going to include photos instead. But you know, I'm going to fucking lay them out anyway, because why not? I, I like to not make sense sometimes. It's fun. You should try it. First, the uh, Combat Troodon. It would probably help if I opened the Scarab, right? Yeah, it would probably be, probably be good, wouldn't it? I'll flip them over where you can see the, the cool details on the, on the, the thing. The uh, Combat Troodon is, is a bit smaller and more gracile, but barely. The contour helps it to feel and appear far more svelte than it actually is. The direct delta is smaller, substantially smaller, and even more gracile. The Ultratech is smaller still. The Cypher is longer and more gracile. I'm just going to say gracile as much as is humanly possible. I just, I don't know, I have a, a weird fixation on that word or something today. I don't really know what's going on, but that's what's happening. The Halo 6... <laughs> is much larger. The Halo is heavier than the Scarab, but it feels lighter because all that weight is spread out more. Let's compare some, some cross-sections here. The Combat Troodon looks thinner, but actually isn't substantially thinner. The Combat Troodon also feels a lot better in the hand than the Scarab, thanks to that contouring. The Dirac Delta is also much thinner, but it kind of has that kind of brick-like feel <laughs> to it. It's not, not the best feel in Microtech in the hand. And really, though, I like this knife. I prefer the smaller Dirac a lot more. And this is one of those knives that, like, I like it, but I'm not quite as obsessed with it as I am with, with some of the others. But it's just, it falls into the pretty damn cool category, whereas something like the Cypher or the Combat Troodon falls into the so cool I can't stand it category. The Ultratech is thinner again. Surprise, surprise. You know, I still, though, as I'm feeling all these, I still think the Scarab is the most versatile knife that Microtech makes. I really do. 
I, I stand by that. I think the cipher is the same thickness as the Ultra Tech. Maybe. I'll measure that later. But it feels thinner somehow. It could just be because it's a longer knife, I guess. And even the Halo. It's a lot thinner than the Microtech. So, you know... You know, the Halo 6 with either the single edge or the Tanto. Let's get the single edge out, too. All right, the Halo 6 with either the single edge or the Tanto. These really sort of have the same versatility as the Scarab in that they have penetrating power, but they also cut really well. But there are some things that hold the Halo back from being particularly versatile. It's a completely different sort of thing. Uh, Halos aren't double action knives. You can't easily deploy and retract them with one hand at your workbench. And they're long and they lack pocket clips. They're an entirely different sort of knife, far less practical and really geared towards the knife enthusiast, right? So keep that in mind. You can do tool tasks or carry these for defense, yes, but it just isn't going to be as versatile as a double action. See what I mean? If you want to put the knife away, you got to do that pull the draw bar to retract the blade. So while I prefer from a coolness aspect, what the fuck does that mean? From a cool... From, <laughs> let me try that again. Uh, in terms of coolness, because that's not a dumber thing to say at all. Uh, let me try that again. In terms of which I find more pleasing to my senses, definitely the Halo. In every way, the Halo is the cooler knife it's a knife I prefer. I prefer the way it feels. I prefer the, the cool action. I like the way it fires. But the Scarab is more versatile and useful in your day-to-day -day life. Far more versatile and useful in your day-to-day -day life. And still ridiculous, but not as ridiculous as the Halo 6, which is the most ridiculous knife that I've ever owned. So what's the Scarab like? Well, when you first pick it up, you immediately notice that it feels lousy in the hand. It's like a brick covered in skateboard tape. But this tape is very grippy, and I love it. I love it on the SOCOM, and I love it here. Just kind of works on everything. It's great. The pocket clip is excellent. And the knife feels very nice and sturdy. Because there's very little contouring, this knife feels much thicker than it actually is. Maybe that makes it better as a dive knife for frog people. I don't know. I'm not one of the Kranig men from Greywater Watch. I don't know what it's like to live as frog people, but maybe that helps somehow. The action feels great. This huge button is definitely good. I feel like the Scarab fires with more force than the other double action OTFs. I'd wager a fairly strong spring is necessary to deploy this heavy blade. Let's see if we can actually tell a difference on camera. Let's compare it to, I don't know, the Combat Troodon doesn't feel like it fires quite as hard. Let's see. I don't know. Maybe it is the same spring. I, I really can't tell. But either way, this fires with some, some serious force. The right amount of pressure is required to deploy and retract the blade. If the blade is held tipped down, it's a little sluggish retracting. Uh, because it fights gravity. Other Microtechs aren't like that, but they also have lighter blades. And it's never malfunctioned in that position. It just feels a little lazy. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. This blade shape is fucking great. It'll do anything. It's delicate enough for just about any cutting task while being strong enough for, well, I guess just about any cutting task. I love it. The blade is covered in these water channels that prevent hydro locking underwater, and that's cool, I guess. I don't think I'll ever need that, but it's there, I guess. Um, I guess, you know, again, if you're out there frog manning, you just got to get that blade out of there so you can fight those Alzheimer sharks. That's, that's, they're ready for you. Can I mention for a second that folks who go scuba diving are fucking insane? Humans don't belong down there. There's all kinds of weird shit in the ocean and it all wants to kill you. So just why? What's wrong with you? Just, just, just throwing that out there. I, I don't understand scuba diving at all. So when I first received this knife, one of the water channels was cut wrong, and I had to send the knife back to Microtech. I've sworn to always tell you the good and the bad, right? Well, I have to say, in the last six months, I've noticed that Microtech's quality control has not been as good as it once was. 
It used to be virtually impeccable. Everybody makes mistakes, but they only made a few. Lately, that has not been the case. I've gotten several knives with really weird manufacturing problems, all of which will be mentioned in, in those reviews. I just haven't gotten around to them yet. And I'm torn because I've always felt that a company is really defined by how well they handle issues when they arise. And Microtech is very eager to fix problems. They genuinely care, and they always repair the issue. But even then, occasionally, sometimes a knife that goes in for repair will come back half-sharpened or something. Like my SOCOM, it came back from the factory and a quarter of the blade was blunt. It's really weird and it's, it's kind of obnoxious. It's also just very un-Microtech-like. They used to be so fastidious about, about everything pick a thing and they were kind of obsessive about it and most of what I've seen has been issues with like grinds and finishes but a substantial number of the new knives that I bought had to be sent in for repair and it's like I just sort of expect it now like when I go to order a knife like is it is it gonna have to go back and that's just that's really really obnoxious and again this is a very very recent phenomenon uh, i went years without having uh, having any major issues this is just uh, this is a right now problem so that also tells me that they're going to work to fix it i i think that there's been uh, an increase in demand for knives, just as there's been an increase in demand for guns, and maybe they've had a hard time keeping up, and, and maybe when things level out, we'll see things sort of return uh, to the way they used to be on the, the quality control end. So keep your fingers crossed there. And again, if you have a problem, they'll fix it. Like I said, it's just annoying. So back to the Scarab. I love this knife. It's incredibly versatile. You can't go wrong with this one. I like it. Final thoughts. This knife isn't pretty, but it has a certain utilitarian charm to it, right? I, I very much enjoy this one, and it'll be in my pocket for years to come. Like I said, this is the most versatile Microtag. The Scarab is very robust with a great action and an awesome blade made of awesome steel, as long as you don't get XHP. I kid, I kid. XHP is an okay steel. So if you've always wanted an OTF but felt they were impractical, you might have a winner in the Scarab too. Or you may find that it's far too large for you, and that's completely fair. Either way, I think it's worth a look. Thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful evening. I'll talk to you soon. Good night.